Good afternoon, Bristol City fans. Well, it's another away day and the Robins are Teesside at the Riverside Stadium for today's Skybet Championship match against Middlesbrough. It's a big game for both teams with wins needed, but it's an especially big afternoon for Borough's new manager, Michael Carrick, with his first game in charge on home soil. And for City, it was a disappointing result on Tuesday, but many fans were impressed with the team's performance. Well, good afternoon. We're here in the Robins studio and joining me is Academy Director Brian Tinian. Brian, how are you today? Very well, thank you. Very well. And coming off from Tuesday's sort of disappointing defeat, we played well, we had lots of chances and we've sort of seen a little look at the, the team sheet already. We're going to be wanting to get some goals. Yeah, definitely. I think the two performances, uh, Swansea and Sheffield United, we got one point and we could have easily had four. So it's disappointing, but I think the performances are really good. I think we were positive. Sheffield United were the better team. Swansea in the first half especially, I thought we were good and we should have been more goals up. So there's been a lot of positives in the two performances, but now can we go and, as you say, get a result? Attacking team. And we need those three points today. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think we're, um, we're probably four or five points off where we should be and where we probably deserve to be. So um, I'm sure... Nigel have the boys uh, rally today and go and be really positive and get it at uh, Middlesbrough. It's also Michael Carrick's <coughs> first game mm. at, at the Teesside, yeah. Riverside Stadium. What are your thoughts on, on him as a manager? You know, it's probably his first proper post after being under the likes of Solskjaer at Man United. Yeah, well, it's a big job. Middlesbrough's a big club. Uh, they expect to be in the Premier League. So he'll be, uh, he'll be under a bit of pressure. And for your first job, it's a big job. So hopefully he didn't get settled in too early and we... We get a, a good performance off our lads today and put them under a bit of pressure. And we know, I know that some of the um, academy teams have been doing well this past month, this mm -hmm. week as well. How yeah. is everything going with that? Yeah, really well. The 21s won again on uh, Tuesday against Charlton, 2-0. Um, had 30 shots in the game and played really well. Our 18s have won today, our 16s have won today. So, yeah, it's going along nicely. And um, uh, we've got a we, Dylan Kaji travel today. We've got Joe Lowe on the bench, Sam Bell. 16-year-old uh, Elijah Morrison travelled with the team, so he's up in Middlesbrough, wow. so he's doing the warm-up on the pitch for them, so fantastic. Um, just need some wins now for the first team, that's the most important. Definitely, and as you said, there's an attacking side that we have today, but Toby Osborne has all of the slightly confusing team news. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Louise. Hopefully we can make sense of it. We'll start, though, with the home side this afternoon on side. Michael Carrick, his first home game in charge. So he'll be wanting to make an impression today. Stuck with a side that saw uh, off Hull City during the week in that 3-1 win. Manchester City loney Zach Steffen remains in goal behind a 4-4-2 going old school. The back four is made up of Ryan Giles on loan from Wolves. The former England youth player Dale Fry, Lenahan and Tommy Smith. The informer Sire Jones and Aussie Riley McGree flank youth player Hayden Hackney and Johnny Howson who makes appearance 6 106 in the league uh, this afternoon in a quite remarkable career for him. Up front, Finland international Marcus Fors and Chuba Akpom, who is the most efficient uh, in front of goal, uh, more so than any other championship player so far this season. Uh, this season. Opportunities, of course, have been scarce for him initially, but he's coming in on an average of one goal every 80 minutes as it stands. A strong bench with Rod Rodrigo Munez uh, among the substitutes today. He's on loan from Fulham. Paddy McNair, of course, who used to play uh, for Manchester United with his now manager Michael Carrick. During his early days at United, he was playing alongside him. As for Bristol City, well, a really frustrating Results uh, during midweek, a performance that deserved at least a point. Nigel Pearson's team couldn't find the back of the net. And if there ever was a starting eleven today that could, it's probably this one. Threats everywhere uh, to the mid uh, Middlesbrough defence. The manager makes three changes. 
a formation that will certainly keep the opposition guessing. We've been trying to guess uh, which way they'll set up prior to starting the show today. The, the manager makes three changes. Uh, Tanner, Sykes and De Silva drop out of the side. Closer, Williams and Semenyo come in. Looks as though Vyman and Semenyo will drop in as high-roaming wing-backs today. A three-man midfield of James, Scott and Williams. Williams went down with what looked at one point to be a bit of a nasty injury based on the replays during the week, but thankfully he's fit and raring to go today. Up top, Conway and Wells are once again the favoured two, both looking to reach the summit of the goal-scoring charts in the Skybet Championship. And then the highlights on the bench include another chance for Joe Lowe, and Sam Bell is back in there again as well, rewarded for all of his hard work for the under-21s. Right, let's hear from the manager now, who today returns to the place that he finished off his playing days. It's Nigel Pearson. No, I have three changes today, including four players who we know can be dangerous in the final 30. And you're going to keep us guessing on the formation. I'm going to keep you guessing, yeah, definitely. But is that an indication of you want to return to that free-scoring element we had earlier in the season? Yeah, look, I, I think it's important that we get the balance right between being positive and also having some sort of solidity to us. So you probably notice that um, you know, we've gone with three uh, central midfield players. Too. So it will be it will be an interesting game. Um, we need to be harder to beat, but we, yeah, we still need to have that positive element because I think that's when we're at our best is when we uh, look to take the game to our opponents. And uh, so yeah, it's uh, last week was frustrating just because the performances that we um, had from our players didn't yield the points that we probably deserve. Um, this is always a, an interesting place to come to, and uh, obviously there's been a change here, so we're looking just to be as positive as we can, um, and, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Enforced change at the back, George Tanner's yeah. suspended, but you've got Tim Closer back in. Yeah. Great to have a player of his experience there. Yeah, good to get Tim, and, and, and uh, Rob Atkinson's... Uh, yeah, training. He needs a bit more uh, before we can we can include him again. So he may be available for for, for our game midweek next week. Um, hopefully, he will be. But yeah, Tim will bring some uh, some experience to the back line. I think that's really important for us. Given the games against Swansea City and Sheffield United, the positive performances. Mm. What do you want to see converted to in order to get the points? Well, look, as always, it's about trying to to be as dependable as we can at the back. And, we, you know, we, we've been... There's no doubt about it. We've been guilty of making mistakes that have been punished. But having said that, the goal that we uh, conceded against Sheffield United was offside. Uh, we can't do anything about that. But we've got to do everything we can to, to um, keep our opponents at arm's length. But, of course, on top of that, we've still got to try and maximise the the attacking options that we have and that's why today we're, we're going positive and we still have good options on the bench too. All the best. Yeah, thanks very much. Nigel Pearson definitely going positive with that team choice there. Now, Brian, there are a lot of goals in that team, but what does he exactly mean by putting out such an attacking side? Well, we're going to get after him. I think their best part of their team has been uh, the attack in the last few weeks, so let's put them on the back foot and be positive and Antoine and Andy playing wide will push their wing backs and their full backs back. So hopefully we can get them stuck in their half a bit. And then you've got Tommy and Naki Wells who will work the socks off at the top. And if we can get some quality into them, then we're going to we're going to score goals. And then it's up to uh, Pringy and um, Tim and Zach to make sure they're switched on at the back and make sure when we're attacking, they don't switch off and get hit on the counter attack. So it's an attacking team. I like it. I like the look of the team. I, I think it's positive. I think it's the way we, we want to play and the way we want to be. So I'm really looking forward to the game. I think we'll get a positive result. And it's good to have closer back in the side, maybe just to give a little bit more experience there. Where we have quite, not, not a young necessarily, but mm. you know we need someone with that confidence and that sort of leadership at the back. Yeah. But every good team has got good senior players in the team because they're the leaders for the young players. So yeah, we've got young players, but Tim in the middle of Pringy and Zach is good. Uh, Cam Pring's been outstanding I think against Swansea and Sheffield United so he's in a good place Zach Vine is playing the best football he's played here probably since he got in the team so 
putting Tim in the middle of them two in great form is is about perfect, I think, to try and keep us solid when we're making them attacking runs with the, with the others. Definitely. Thank you, Brian. Well, let's take a look back now to a classic match from 2012, the year that the world was supposed to end, but it wasn't for Bristol City because they won in North Yorkshire. It's 10 without a win for Bristol City, but there's cause for optimism for Derek McInnes, who was full of praise for his team after last weekend's draw with Blackpool. One of the main stories this week has been the return of Matthew Bates to famous face his former club, but he isn't fit enough to make the squad, and so Lewis Carey instead makes his 635th City appearance. Just that one surging run from Brian, who is on the ball now. Brian with a chance to swing it in low to Adoma, and it's found its way through! Bristol City leading the Riverside! Well, you have to say it goes down as a goalkeeping error as well. Went straight through Jason Steele and under him as he tried to dive. Albert Adoma, what a shock this would be. Gives Bristol City the lead here. With 13 minutes gone. Things are looking up for Bristol City here. Corner in. It's found its way almost through in there. Bristol City made to pay for those missed chances. Ishmael Miller converts after confusion from the corner. We're back to square one for Bristol City. Suddenly, the home fans have been on their team's back for the last 20 minutes in such good voice. Bristol City to just pick themselves up and go again here. Taylor controls into space. Looks for Neil Dans on the overlap. Dans has a chance to whip it across the six yard box and he does! And it's found its way in! Bristol City lead again! Well, it was a really good bit of control from Taylor. Found himself some space. And Stephen Pearson it is who puts Bristol City back in front. It was a great little ball in from Neil Dans and uh, some good trickery from Pearson just to lift it over Jason Steele and into the back of the net. Little ball across Williams. Here's Williams. Again. Middlesbrough have had a lot of shots from distance but never really testing Tom Heaton with these kind of efforts. Adoma. Had an absolute stormer this afternoon, Albert Adoma, and he's going here. Pulls it back, Davies. Goes for goal, it's there! Bristol City have won it! Steve Davies grabs his seventh of the season, and the City fans are in dreamland in the away end. Who would have seen this coming at three o'clock this afternoon? And the Borough fans are pouring out in numbers. It was a great bit of pay from Adoma. As I said, had a fantastic game this afternoon. And Stephen Davies does what he does best. Nice little turn in the box. And bang, past Jason Steele and Bristol City will be taking home three points back to Bristol this afternoon. Hopefully we'll have some goals like that this afternoon. Coming up after the break, we will go over to Alex Scott and Rob Atkinson, who will be playing teammates. <laughs> Taking all of you, stepping on place, feeling the fear. I know you're feeling it in the air. Whole squad wearing all black, motivations looking real bad. Huh? We back to the bone, raising a fire alone. We ain't never needed nobody. Give me six feet, this is my party. Ain't got no feelings, we heartless. Take a pick us out of darkness. Blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming.
When the red, red robin comes ba ba bobbing along, along. The robins who this season have gone bobbing along right into the second division of the English Football League. The robins. in Bristol, you'll know that is the signature tune of Bristol City, the Robins. So we've got all this outdoor space here and it's perfect for companies to come in, whether they're small or large. So we cater for maybe a team of 12 or a team of 800. They can come here, have a really positive experience and be rewarded for all their hard work in the office or whatever industry they're from. As we've got such a big company, a lot of us don't see each other. Being able for the first time to get everyone out together in one place doing an activity together was great for team bonding and boosting their morale. We can um, hone in on specific skills such as communication, leadership, teamwork, resilience. Here we've got a 400 metre military assault course which is fantastic for team building. If you want a morale booster, this is the place to come. Welcome back to Robins TV. Bristol City are up in North Yorkshire for a big, big game this afternoon against Middlesbrough. Soon the players will be taking to the pitch, but before that we have a look back at a little teammates test that Rob Atkinson did with Alex Scott. <laughs> Boys, welcome to Robins TV. You are about to take the uh, teammates test where we see how much you know about each other's careers. How are we feeling about that? Yeah, easy. I'm going to win. So. I take uh, we'll a lot of we'll interest into Rob's career. Nice. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll see. We'll see. So, Rob, you're going to go first. Your first question about Alex. So, Scott was first onto the scene at the end of the 2020-21 season but had to wait until the next season for his first goal. Who did he score his first one against? It's a test with you as well, Alex. No, I know. I think I might know. Okay, write your answers Obviously. down, perhaps. Oh, do I write it as well? Yeah, yeah, if you write them down as well, we'll get Alex to reveal. First goal, yeah. First goal, first Bristol City goal. Rob, who do you think? Forest. Forest. Nottingham Forest. Correct. Nice, Rob. Well done, Rob. That's good. I remember that. that. I remember that. No, I remember game. that game. I felt terrible that game. I'd just come back from... Uh, Did you play? Yeah. Came back from COVID. Yeah, that was horrible. I was, yeah. The last said about that day. Yeah. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Let's about that game with her. First question about Rob. Now, fun fact about Rob is his career started in France. He started at the same academy which produced which football legend? Smile on Rob's face, I think you know this one. Football legend. The same academy that produced Rob Atkinson also produced which football legend? No clue, but we'll give it a go. All right. Alex, what do you reckon? Henri. Henri. Rob, can you reveal? It's a great guess, but there's actually Zidane. a few. Zidane, Vieira, Atkinson. Oh, oh Vieira as well. I Pat Patrick Vieira is there as well, yeah. Well, there you go. It's not bad, though. That's, That's, That's tough. tough right? yeah, it is tough compared, it's yeah, compared to your question. That's tough. It's alright then, I'll come no. back. I didn't know if it was one of those things Rob always talks about. No, no, no. no, he does speak about himself a lot. <laughs> not about. Uh, Legends of France now. There you go. Okay, go on. another another one for Rob here, Alex. Yeah. Rob had a nickname during his time at non league Eastleigh. That was his first club, first uh, club that he joined. <laughs> they called him the Vanarama What? 
Ooh. I've heard it. Not about Kingston, the Banorama. What? Straight into that one, Rob. You're aware of this new thing? Yeah, I know. I know exactly Ooh. what it is. Okay, Rob. Reveal your answer. Van Dyke. Get on that spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Just reveal no. your spelling of Van Dyke for us there, Rob. That's how you spell it, mate. That's Linden. You both. <laughs> Yeah, okay. but that's that's the nickname. That's what it's on the nickname. Why? Well, there's Dick Van Dyke, which is spelled how Rob spelled. Yeah, you know, I just completely guessed how to spell Dyke. Van Dyke, right. yeah, yeah. Rob Woods, the Vanarama Van Dyke. Oh, spelt like that. That's like terrible. Scotty. Yeah, that's terrible. Right? Um, the reason my my mate, my close mates, actually run a Twitter page, and they called me that, and for some reason the Eastley admin just clocked that's on, that. and you just. Started going with it, nice. so that's that's the origins of the nickname. It's a good nickname, though. Yeah. Better good rhyming good nickname. Words. Generous, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, yeah. Yeah. Rob, this is your last one for Alex. Now, he didn't want us to mention England, but he did score with his first touch of the Euro Under-19 semi-finals this summer. But against who? <sighs> Easy. Now. I think I know. We actually watched the game. So no, no, we didn't. So we didn't watch the game. We watched another game. But I'm, I think, I think I've got it. Right. It was the Euros, wasn't it? It was the Euros. Yeah, okay. Alex that narrows it down a little bit. Italy, Italy. Rob. Yeah. Italy as well. Top man. Fair enough. Header, wasn't it? From a. You should know that though. From a uh, corner. Yeah, big header, taking some. Notes Unlike from him. Nice. Unlike taking you. Taking notes off you, mate. So this is to equalise. Seal it as a draw, Come on, Alex. Your last question. Rob has scored five goals in his time at Bristol City mm -hmm. so far. How many of those have been at Ashton Gate? It's pretty easy, that, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. He scored Bournemouth away, Cardiff at home, Peterborough at home, the other day at home. Okay. Rob, what's your answer, please? Out of five, four at home. Alex has gone four, four as well. It well is four. Mate. Congratulations. So what were they? Bournemouth away. Yep. Peterborough, Peterborough home. home. Preston, Cardiff home. Cardiff home. Preston Brace. Preston. Oh, you scored two. Yeah. <laughs> that was only the other uh, day as well. Uh, <laughs> you know what, that's, that means it's a draw. And yeah. A pretty good sign. Yeah, that's fair. You're a good teammate. Yeah, very good. Well done. Well done, mate. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Well, there you go, squabbling <laughs> over how you spell Van Dyke. Anyway, what are though their personalities like, sort of on and off the pitch? They're quite contrasting, those two. Yeah, Scotty's very relaxed, but Scotty never changes. He's the same now when he walked in the club at 16, and Rob's very laid back, as you can see. Um, two yeah, very exciting characters, them two. So, obviously, it's very, very close to kick-off. <clears throat> now, what are your final predictions for today's game? I think we're going to get a positive result. I think the three in midfield are going to have to control the game and be disciplined with um, with Andy and Antoine wide and attacking probably more than our full-backs would normally attack, our wing-backs. So, yeah, I think the, the midfield could be where the game is um, is won. If Matty James and Joe Williams and Scotty play well, I think we'll win the game. And what do you think we'll win the game by? Well, that team, I'll be disappointed if we don't score at least two. So 2-0 two will be lovely. Thank you very much, Brian, and you'll be on our commentary team with Toby Osborne. But it's now time for those who are on the free to stream things like YouTube and Facebook to say goodbye. If you are overseas and want to watch the game, you can go onto the Bristol City website to buy a match day past. But for